Hello and welcome back to part three of my guide on the DS1019 Plus Perfect Setup. There are so many users that are going to set this bad boy up in a different way. There are so many like, you know, videos I've done like this where the, the things I'm telling you can apply to lots of different NASes. But the, 10, the DS1019 Plus is a strange kind of a NAS because it fits a lot of builds. It's got that five bay setup. That means you've got a good redundant robust storage array even with a RAID. But at the same time has lots of internal hardware and price points that make it very affordable to home users. And what do a lot of home users use an as for? Media. So today I want to talk about the perfect media setup for the home using a DS1019 Plus. What are the settings you need to go to and what are the things to bear in mind for the future? So let's make our way to the screen. Right, so we're back on DSM on our DS1019 Plus. Now, when it comes to watching your video media on this NAS, there are lots of different ways to do it. Almost certainly, the devices you're going to be utilizing to watch media that lives on this NAS are not going to be from the NAS themselves. Maybe you'll be using smart TVs that support the LNA, maybe you'll be using consoles maybe uh, that support the LNA playback as well as things like Plex, maybe you'll be using mobile phones or maybe you might even be using Synology's own applications. Now straight off the bat to save any disappointment I am not really going to talk about Plex in this video. That in itself is an entire separate video on this device. So yes Plex Media Server on the DS1019 Plus is great and it does work very well indeed, although it does struggle at some 4K and top-end 1080p media. And I mean really top-end stuff. But I'm going to do a whole video on that coming soon. For now, what I want to talk about is DLNA and general video media enjoyment on this device. Now, for those that are looking for easy, um, no-hassle access with as few apps as possible, I recommend using Synology Drive. It's an application that you can download on the App Center. It's completely for free and it's available for iOS, Android and desktop clients. Um, and on here we have got all the files and we've got folders, we've got videos, we've got music, we've got the works. And if we choose some of this stuff and I've gone for some really retro stuff, we can have a look at some of these files. These are from the Internet Archive and again a simple double click will play them or download them to your local PC. And here's the file with some old retro stuff. Once again, can't recommend the Internet Archive enough for some really retro stuff. And again, you can watch all these files. There might be a slight lag there for you guys at home because I'm using a video capture on this PC. There may have been a bit of a struggle there for frames per second. But what if you don't want to look at a file structure and you want something a little bit more intuitive? Well, that comes down to two options for you. First and foremost, you can use Synology's own application, Video Station. This will, if you add the right directories, sequence and find and create metadata for your video files. I've only added these a very short while ago, so it's only indexed the one so far. But over time, it will index all of your TV shows, as well as make recommendations for other TV shows and descriptions and graphics. This is a crazy old TV show that I ripped from the Internet Archive. And again, as soon as you add files, it will use things like IMDB and other online sources to fill in the, the blanks. Adding folders and files is really, really easy indeed. If we go here, we'll add a brand new folder. Well, this time we'll go for other, and we shall add another directory, and we'll call this one TV Specials. And this is a big pile of folders and files that I found once again on the Internet Archive, and we'll add these directly. So we'll go into here, we'll give them a folder to look through. Go to there, sorry, wrong option. Click the plus. And again, we'll start adding TV to these directories. If I do that properly, actually select the right option. So we'll go to TV specials. And again, we'll edit that and give it a new directory to search for for its media. So again, this goes back to the NAS directory. You click in there, I've collected selected videos, and I've got special. Select that, click OK, and it will now start indexing that folder. And these are files, if we go to the file manager here, go down to video, go into special. There shouldn't be too many files here, but once again, these are old TV stuff. And this is already starting to index those files for us. So we go to TV specials, 
and it's already started finding them. And then over time, it will search the Internet Archive, IMDb and more to find out more information about it. And it will give you lots of information about the quality, the link for the movie, that sort of stuff. And again, all of these can be watched within Video Station. As you can see, there's that classic one from earlier. Minimize that. We only half screened it so we could see more on screen. And the Video Station application is like a lighter, faster version of Plex. It's nowhere near as detailed without all the extra stuff. And like I said, I said I wouldn't talk about Plex much in this video. But this, this is another keen way to enjoy your media. But let's face it, you're going to be enjoying a lot of this media on other devices on your network. Your TV, your console, your phone and more. And for those, you're going to have to enable DLNA support and increased media server support and there's two things you can do here one you can install the media server application and this makes media accessible on supported devices on your dlna um, supported network here you can select the kind of um, user interface you want as well as stuff like this which is very keen for simplistic network video sharing again you can tinker with a lot of internal options and also enable other stuff. If you go to DMA, you can enable certain codecs which do require licensing in some cases. But this will make this media network accessible and the NAS network accessible on those devices. Things like TVs and consoles will show the DS1019 Plus on your network as an available media server. Or if things like um, you're using Amazon Fire TV or an Amazon Alexa, you can install applications that let you install Synology apps that will contact the NAS in a far more direct and branded fashion. Now, in the control panel, there are a number of options regardless of any of these media types that you go for and the media applications you've used that you need to enable. One is file indexing. This can be done automatically or manually to go through all the files and folders on your NAS to index them for media access. And thumbnail settings, of course, if you are going to be utilizing media, you're going to create thumbnails. That's tiny little images of the file that are easier to see when scrolling through. And thumbnail generation settings can be adjusted here, along with video conversions that can be done with transcoding in advance or a lighter form of transcoding that will reshape files and make duplicates that when accessed will send these files to the destination devices and make them run a great deal quicker. But of course, we will move on to a video dedicated to Plex Media Server on the 1019 Plus very shortly. But otherwise, thank you so much for watching. I hope you've enjoyed this video, and I will see you next time.